Hi, hello everyone. Welcome to second session. In last session, we had discussed about organism and its environment. Now, the session two. In the session two, we will discuss about major abiotic factors. See, there are four major abiotic factors. One is temperature. Temperature. The second one is water. The third one is light. The fourth one is soil. So these are all four major abiotic factors. Now we will discuss one by one. See temperature. See temperature is one of the most important ecologically relevant environmental factor. One of the most important ecologically relevant environmental factor. See on land the average temperature. See on land the average temperature. The average temperature varies seasonally. Varies seasonally. See, winter season agribodo, summer season agribodo, enak tairatendre, average temperature enakatendre, vary at tairate. Okay. See, the temperature gradually decreases from equator to poles. The temperature is gradually decreased from equator to poles and plains to and plains to mountain tops. Plains to mountain tops and then ranges of temperature the ranges of temperature is sub zero levels sub zero levels in polar areas polar areas and high altitude and high altitude okay but in tropical desert but in tropical desert shows up to 50 degrees celsius temperature here yes where in tropical desert the tropical desert shows up to 50 degrees celsius range of temperature okay see the average temperature the average temperature in thermal springs the average temperature in thermal springs thermal springs and hydrothermal vents and hydrothermal Vents. See thermal springs. Kannadalle hello thandre thermal springs and thandre busy bogge galu. Atwa ushna bogge galu anta kariti be. Okay. See the hydrothermal vents only create agatne thandre volcanoes. Okay. Volcanoes only volcanoes eruption agatella. So only ena agatte hydrothermal vents create agatte. So it shows it exceeds up to hundred degrees Celsius. It exceeds up to 100 degree Celsius temperature. Okay. See the mango trees. The mango trees cannot grow in temperate countries. The mango trees cannot grow in temperate countries. Temperate countries like Canada and Germany. Canada and Germany. So these are all temperate countries. Here the mango trees cannot grow. Okay. So and there is no snow leopards there is no snow leopards in kerala there is no snow leopards snow leopards in kerala in kerala the tuna fishes are rare beyond the tropical latitude of the ocean tropical latitude of the ocean okay so Next, we will discuss about significance of temperature. So, what are the significance of temperature? It mainly affects on kinetics of enzymes. It mainly affects on affects on kinetics of enzymes. Kinetics of enzymes. Okay, and also basal metabolism. Basal metabolism and also affect on other physiological functions of organism other physiological functions of organism so these are all significance of temperature significance of temperature okay based on range of thermal tolerance thermal tolerance the organisms are divided into two types the organisms are divided into two types one is 
urethermal organisms urethermal organisms and stenothermal organisms stenothermal organisms okay so it's on range of thermal tolerance the organisms are divided into two types one is urethermal and stenothermal see what is urethermal organisms see the organisms tolerate wide range of temperature the organisms tolerate wide range of temperature wide range of temperature okay see wide range of temperature andre iga human beings adwa mammals enagutte antandre temperature eshte adre enagutte temperature ge adjust aga adjust aagtivi temperature eshte jaasti adru kuda enagutte temperature ge adjust agutte so anta organisms ge nave enant karitivi urethermal organisms anta karitivi example humans cats dogs cows see this is all example for urethermal organism urethermal organisms tolerance andre est est temperature increase adru kuda tadkolutte that is called tolerance okay next stenothermal organisms means the organisms tolerate only a narrow range of temperature narrow range of temperature narrow range of temperature so narrow range of temperature or very low temperature or very low temperature see examples for steen example for stenothermal organisms we can give some corals and some insects insects and some reptiles and some reptiles is this are all example for stenothermal organisms so based on range of thermal tolerance the organisms are divided into two types one is a urethermal and stenothermal urethermal organisms means the organism tolerates wide range of temperature example humans cats dogs and cows okay the stenothermal uh, organisms means the organisms tolerate narrow range of temperature or very low temperature example corals insects and few reptiles okay water water is the may second most major abiotic factor okay see the plants needs water see the plants needs water to perform various functions like photosynthesis like photosynthesis see does the desert organisms shows special adaptation to limited water okay the production and distribution of plants and distribution of plants mainly depend depend on water source for aquatic organism the water quality for aquatic organisms water quality water quality for aquatic organisms water quality is very important so what is water quality water quality means uh, chemical composition and ph chemical composition chemical composition and ph that is called water quality salinity in water salinity in water see what is salinity simply we can say salt concentration salt concentration salt concentration see in land water sorry in in land water the salt concentration is less than 5 is less than 5 percent okay in sea water in sea water the salt concentration is maybe up to 30 to 35 percent 30 to 35 percentage okay in hypersaline lagoons hyper saline lagoons see hypersaline lagoons means hypersaline lagoons means see the salt water is separated from sea so that is called hypersaline lagoons here the salt concentration is up to 100% up to 100% next based on range of tolerance to salinity the organisms are two types based on based on 
range of tolerance to salinity tolerance to salinity the organisms are two types the organisms are two types one is urihaline urihaline organisms and stenohaline organism stenohaline organisms so so basically urihaline organisms means the organisms tolerate wide range of salinity the organisms tolerate wide range of wide range of salinity so we can give example for urihaline organisms common common moly and european european green crab european green crab okay so wide range of salinity means uh, maybe it may be up to 32 30, 32 35 range of concentration okay so this is called urihaline organism urihaline i will repeat urihaline organisms means the organism tolerate wide range of salinity the organism tolerate wide range of salinity next stenohaline organisms see stenohaline organisms means the organism uh, tolerate only narrow range of salinity only narrow range of narrow range of salinity that is called that is called stenohaline organism it's called stenohaline organism see example for stenohaline organism goldfish goldfish and hot dog hot dog and etc the remaining aquatic animals are example for stenohaline organisms the next major abiotic factor is light the next major abiotic factor is light see the plants needs light to perform the photosynthesis function see the plants needs light to perform the photosynthesis function okay see many small plant species which means herbs and shrubs herbs and shrubs are all adapted to photosynthesize optimally under low light under low light see because of these are herbs and shrubs are overshadowed by tall and canopied trees tall and canopy trees new forest alli nodabodu sanna putta gidagal enagirutte doddu doddu maragali doddu doddu maragalinda enagirutte cover agirutte so so in this situation the herbs and shrubs adapted to photosynthesize optimally under low light under low light even higher plants even higher plants is also depend on sunlight is also depend on sunlight for photoperiodism for photoperiodism photoperiodism okay example for photoperiodism flowering 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 okay see even higher plants is also depend on sunlight for photoperiodism example flowering okay even some animals even some animals also use diurnal even some animals also use diurnal diurnal and seasonal variations seasonal variation in intensity of light in intensity of light intensity of light and and photoperiod photo period for photo period for time for their uh, foraging foraging means uh, to search the food and reproduction and migrating activities okay pratiyond animals kuda enagide light mele depend agide so because of day time alli enagutte adu food search maadu food beta aadodakke matte reproduction and migrating activities one kade inda innond kade move agodakke enagutte light na use maadutte so totally we conclude the sunlight is the major source for both temperature and the light sunlight is the sunlight is the major source for both light and temperature both light and temperature
a deep sea the deep sea means uh, maybe it may be up to um, 500 meters 500 meters depth 500 meters depth in ocean so there is no light there is no light here there is only presence of dark environment presence of dark environment presence of see some spectral quality of solar radiations are very important in life and also some are harmful that is called uv uv spectrum uv spectrum is is harmful to organism is harmful to organism So the last one major abiotic factor is soil. See the nature and the properties of soil. See the nature and see the nature and the properties of soil. Properties of soil in different places vary. In different places vary. So place to places in Agate soil vary Agate. So within Karnataka you can observe different types of soil. Okay. So red soil, black soil. Okay, and the clay soil, Kannada dala yela dadre, Kempu mannu, Kappu mannu, uh, Mekkalu mannu. So, either a different soil na nao Okay, so the nature and properties of soil is mainly depend on, is mainly depend on climate, climate and weather and weathering process, weathering process and sedimentation and method of development and method of development of soil method of development of soil see the soil shows various characteristics that is called soil composition that is called soil composition and grains of size grains of size grains of size and aggregation and aggregation see these are all characteristics of soil soil composition grains of size and aggregation so these determine percolation percolation and water holding capacity of the soil water holding water holding capacity of the soil okay so these characteristics soil composition grain sizes grains of size and aggregation so these characteristics determines percolation and water holding capacity of the soil see along with these characteristics along with these characteristics some parameters some parameters which means mineral composition mineral composition mineral composition and pH mineral composition and pH topography and topography topography so topography so this determine the vegetation and animals in area so this are all determine vegetation vegetation and animals in area in area thank you